okay I'm back and so there was a video I watched last night a guy I've never heard of never seen he's obviously very popular he's got over a million subscribers his name is Sky Williams and I am going to put a link to his channel in the description now that he needs it but he made a video talking about depression and he summed it up and everything he said in that video 100% true wish I could say it wish I could come up with the words but I haven't been able to express that things that I think about in my head what he describes in that video about what a friend to a depressed person should be is exactly what I'm looking for and never been able to find so you watch the video I'll put a link to his channel and the video if you have not seen it please check it out this video should be the number one video on YouTube because this guy right here just nailed it he describes in here that he used to be naive when it came to depression and, and people who were depressed but then he, he had a friend who committed suicide and that's when he got it he got it a little bit too late he talks about that in the video and he talks about what type of friend depressed people need and it is the 100 percent total truth if i had people in my life like that i would be so much better off and i've yet to find those people and i'm still on that journey and hopefully, hopefully, I will find them one day. So watch that video. Um, but now, it's, it takes a suicide of a top iconic actor to bring mental health back into the forefront of this country. And it is a damn shame that something tragic always has to happen before we have a conversation. And unfortunately, I'm just hoping it's not one of those things that we talk about it for a month and then sweep it back under the rug. Because that's not what we need. What we need is an understanding from the non-sufferers of mental illness. We need them to understand we are not in this position because we want to be. There is something, just like Sky Williams says, in our body that's not letting us be what we want. We talk about how we want to be and how we want to feel but something inside is preventing us and until that something inside is found and pulled out of us we're probably never going to succeed and ultimately a lot of us end up in death suicide by our own hands and it's just something that i is very personal to me because i feel suicidal i would say i don't feel suicidal every day but there's not a day that goes by that I don't think about, man, I'd be better off dead. So, But I have been in a suicidal type thinking mode, you know, over the last couple of months with everything that's going on. Of course, I have not done it. Uh, will I ever do it? More than likely not. Hell, I wanted to do it when I was in my teenage years, and I attempted it three times in my life. I've said that before, but I'm still here for a reason. And I guess if it's to be miserable every day with a few bits of of happiness from something I find enjoyable the rare enjoys that I have then you know what maybe that's the way my life is meant to be that's the way it's been for so long you know there have been changes here and there there have been ups but mostly downs the last six years but maybe another ups coming maybe this six year down because I've, you know, this has really been going on since, like, my, I've been on a huge downswing since 08. Before that, I was having, you know, leaps and valleys, leaps and valleys, but I've been on a boom for six years. And always, you know, earlier in life, something would always come along that would give me a little bit of an up, and then something would sweep in and take it all away, which I always hated. And then the depression following that would always be much worse than depression before, but... I've been on a six year downslide and I'm, I'm just hoping that the next up, if there's another up, is an up that is going to be lasting longer than six months to a year, which is how most of my ups were. Uh, the longest up I've had since the last 20 years has probably been a year and a half. So, and that was 2002, the end of 2000, no actually that was early 2003 to the summer of 2004. Uh, it was my first real job, and um, it was just a new experience for me. So that was an up until something came along and took it away. And what came along and took it away was the evilness known as depression, which crept back into my mind when I felt like I was back in school all over again, seeing all the co-workers 
talk to each other, hang out, and yet here I was going to work day in and day out. No one ever wanted to talk to me. No one ever wanted to invite me to anything. Everybody would hang out after work, or most people would. Yet I was like, they would talk to me about work-related things when we were in the building. That was it. I was not approached for any social settings, and that hurt. That cut deep, and that brought on the depression that caused me to turn really, really deep back into two drugs because I'd gotten sober briefly. And then that was, you know, there, the roller coaster ride just really went up and down after that. So, but anyways, you know, we don't need to lose any more people. I'm a, you know, I, I honestly believe somewhere deep down inside that, and I've seen flashes of it over the years, but I think there's a lot more to me that, that can be brought out. It's just not coming out because goddamn mental illness is not allowing it to come out. The block. I don't see, basically for me, and I've said this all along, I, it's going to take people in my daily life around me showing that I mean something to them. I'm sure there are people out there that enjoy what I do, and I might mean a little bit to them, but I need to, I'm, the kind, I'm so like bad off in it and been in it so long that I need to see it around me. Like the guy described, Sky Williams described in his video. That's the kind of friends I need in my life. But the problem is there are not many of those type of people out there that understand this horrible, heinous disease that has taken the old and the young and everything in between. It, it has no color barrier. Like with most diseases, anybody can get it. This just happens to be a disease of your brain. And you know what? They think they know what causes it and they, they got books and stuff out and they got therapists and pills and stuff. But to be honest with, with you, in my experience, I don't think they understand it enough and I don't think they have put in enough research over the years to get to the root cause of it. They have got to find what is clicking in our brains that is not allowing us to function as a quote unquote typical normal life. Now nobody's normal in my opinion. There is no normal. But there is kind of like a, a path you can follow of normalness. You know what I mean? And you can stray from that all you want. That's why I don't think there is any set normal. But something in here and in other people's minds does not click to allow them to function on a normal day-to-day -day basis in life. They gotta find that, and no pill is gonna fix that. There's something, something. There's got to be a way. Hell, I've even went as far as to say that I'd be willing to, to erase my mind and start over. And that's what it took. Because then I wouldn't know about the pain. I wouldn't know who I was. I'd be completely reborn, basically. And then, that's a possibility. Well, I take that back. I don't know if that there, it is possible to erase someone's memory. I've heard, and I know you can get uh, amnesia, but you know, usually in most cases, your original memory returns maybe not 100%. But I want something that would take it away for good, and so I can start over and be reborn and retrain. Problem with that is. A man in his 30s that loses his memory. It's kind of hard to retrain someone in their 30s as opposed to someone in their teens. So I know that sounds extreme, but that just seems to me like one of the only options, like would be an, a best option. Because then I could just start over and, and, and would never know about my life and the history and who I was before. And I would ensure, and I would make sure, make it clear to everyone ahead of time to never ever mention anything about my previous life. That if I was to have it, my memory erased and start over, whatever, what have you. And it's probably just science fiction talk here, but we're moving into some deep technologies and things are possible that we thought never were before, so anything's possible. But I would want the people 
Well, really, I've got my grandmother in that too. So if she was still alive, I would want her to try to come back into my life as just like a friend or something. But never mention anything about my past. But then again, this is all just fantasy talking. This is extreme, you know. I'm just saying, I'm just, you know, making an example. You know, that's how bad it feels sometimes. But if I had friends like Sky Williams describes, maybe life would just be a little bit more easier. And I think a lot of us who go through this, if we had someone like he describes, may not be 100% better, hell no. People with our condition, it may never ever be that way. But hell, if the day's 10% better than the days of past, and that's huge to our psyche. I've often said, I don't wish this on anybody who doesn't have it, who spends their life every day alone and pretty much has been alone for the past 20 years. And that's not what humans, humans are social beings, it's not the way it's supposed to be. So. Uh, what I think, again, they need to get deep down to the genetics of it. I think what one thing they haven't done a good job of is figuring out the genetic code for someone who has mental illnesses. And they range from, you know, all the way from your simple depression to, you know, schizophrenia and in between. You know, just the code needs to be figured out because. They think that they can, they've got the cure to cancer and they're working on it hard. And they've been working on the cure to cancer for a long, long time. Well, start working on the cure to mental illness, please. Start working on the cure to fix our brains and what is not wired right and is not allowing us to live a you know, typical life. So, that's it and that's all for this video, you know just telling it like I see it how I feel and it's good it's good for me to, to talk but really all you people who watch me and this guy doesn't need me to promote him he's got over a million subscribers so he's doing something right but this video clicks so good with me that as many people that haven't seen it need to see it and if you haven't seen it watch it and send it to other people let's get this video number one this video right here needs to be the number one video across youtube land this guy right here he's already got like i said over a million subscribers but this could take this guy national this could take this guy around this country this video is like spot freaking on so watch it let me know what you think and i'll see you guys next time thank you for entering my alone zone as always i'm chris and i'm out so until next time, peace.